But, uh, you know, I feel like we've had a thing where we've looked ahead to the, the next pay-per-view every time. So let's start there uh, with UFC 266 because we got uh, – this is one – you know, we talked about this. We did, a, we did a couple of videos about this one back on the other channel that we were on. But uh, Brian Ortega against uh, Volkanovski here for the uh, featherweight gold at UFC 266 – and uh, this fight is pretty interesting. I feel like I feel like Ortega offers a little bit more as far as in the grappling, uh, like uh, uh, in in comparison to the matchup with um, Max Holloway. I feel like Ortega might offer a little bit more as far as uh, you know his finishing ability, as far as like uh, you know submission threat and stuff like that. But as far as boxing goes, I might, I kind of, I think it might be 50 50. Ortega kind of showed us, you know, Ortega showed us the, a, a new wrinkle to his game against uh, Korean Zombie. But, you know, we haven't, I don't, we haven't seen Volkanovsky in over a year now. So I feel like he's been, he's been leveling up too. So uh, I, I feel like the, I feel like this fight is going to, is going to be, um, very anti of what the other two uh, Volkanovski championship fights were. I don't think it's going to just be a stand-up, uh, five-minute stand-up affair similar to Volkanovski, Max Holloway. I think if Ortega's smart, he's going to go out there and grapple and try to, um, you know, uh, try to eliminate the danger of Volkanovski and try to just gas him out and work a submission game uh you know we've seen ortega it, with this new wrinkle in the stand-up but uh you know i know even after in his interview uh after that fight he was saying like don't think i've still been i haven't been working my my jujitsu my wrestling you know he just wanted to go and show showcase his uh his striking so with this one man Based on the line, minus 175 Volkanovski and plus 160 on Ortega, I got I, I lean slightly towards Ortega here because, um, you know, Ortega's 8-1 and one in the UFC since his 2014 uh, debut. Seven of those eight wins coming by way of stoppage. The zombie win was the only one that he's had go to decision. And then uh, Vol- Volkanovski's 9-0 and in the UFC with uh, three of those nine wins inside the dis- uh, inside the distance and uh, a bunch of decisions in there as well. So both guys have stopping ability, but I feel like Ortega has just a little bit more stopping uh, ability in this matchup. So I got to lean. I, I think I got to lean. Uh, yeah, I got to lean that 165 on Ortega. I think that he's... He, I think he's got the grappling edge in this in this matchup. I don't know necessarily if if his strength is going to be there. Uh, Volkanovski might be the the tougher guy, like uh, you know the stronger guy when it gets to those exchanges. But if it gets to the ground, I gotta go. I think Ortega with what we've seen before with him. Uh, I think he's super dangerous, super elusive on the mat too. So I gotta lean Ortega here. What do you think? Yeah, well, man, you know, the the big question mark I have is that Brian Ortega performance we saw in his last fight to get him this title shot, right? The dismantling of Korean Zombie. I mean, just a fight where he absolutely outstruck Korean Zombie and who, who who's ever gone toe-to-toe and outstruck Korean Zombie? I mean, I know Yair Rodriguez knocked him out, but that was a fight that Yair Rodriguez was on his way to losing a 49-46 decision. I mean, he, that fight was lost on the scorecards for Yair Rodriguez. Korean Zombie needed to literally last one more second. By the way, folks, I was there live. Unreal moment. I mean, uh, a, a silence in the crowd like you've never seen. Just confusion in the air. Was the shot late? Was the shot? Did he really hit a buzzer beater like that? Unreal moment. But what, what I'm saying is, is, you know, Ortega just opened a lot of people's eyes. If Ortega was going to be zombie, it was going to be through, by the sub. It was going to be with the ground game. You know, nobody out there was saying, watch Brian Ortega, a jiu-jitsu specialist, come out here and, you know, put it on Korean zombie for five rounds, right? Now, there was a shot in the first round that really hurt zombie. And based off what zombie said, you know, after the fight was essentially he's out on his feet and really didn't come to until at some point in the fifth round. 
And when you look at Zombie's performance, man, I, I kind of take his word for it. He did seem out of it, just kind of fighting on instinct and just was changed off that. I want to say it was, I think it was a spinning back elbow he ate from Ortega. So in a way, I don't want to put too much stock into that Ortega striking performance, right? I, I, I mean, he absolutely was improved. You know, it had been a big layoff since we had seen Ortega coming into that fight. He looked really good. Like I said, I'm not knocking him. A win over Korean Zombie under any circumstance is just a phenomenal thing to achieve and puts you in title contention, right? Um, but, you know, Volk is a guy, Alexander Volkanovsky, a dude that I've never gone against. I've never bet against this guy. I've always bet on this guy. I bet him at uh, big plus money against Max Holloway in the first fight. Don't get me wrong. Close fight. He scored for Holloway. I get it, man. Very close fight. In the rematch, same deal. Uh, I said, I think Volkanovski holds on. Man, if you think Max Holloway won that fight, there's an argument for it, man. Both fights absolutely razor freaking thin, right? Um, but what I'm getting at is, is look at what Max Holloway then has gone on to do against Calvin Cater, a high-level boxer. Look at what Max Holloway's done to everybody else outside of Dustin Poirier up a division. I mean, there's levels to the striking acumen at featherweight, and it's Max Holloway and, and uh, Alexander Volkanovsky head and shoulders above everyone else. And I don't know if Brian Ortega's at that level. I still think Ortega's best path to victory here is using, uh, you know, latching onto one of those standing guillotines, you know, that leaping guillotine, um, you know, because I'm telling you right now, man, you you go out there even the as the longer guy, you know, which uh, uh, Ortega is going to be. So is Max Holloway, you know. Volk's just so damn good, so damn powerful, so damn strong. The output's outrageous for 25 minutes. The numbers he can put up. I got to go. I got to go Volkanovsky here if – if Ortega really is that dude and has elevated his striking to that level, um, I still think he's going to have a tough time with Alexander Volkanovsky. Uh, I, I think I got Volk in this one, man. I, I just feel like he's really at a peak, and I think if there's a guy that's going to be Volkanovsky, it's probably going to need to be somebody coming in there and, and putting on a Max Holloway performance, maybe even Max himself if they somehow find it you know, a third time uh, that they that they go around, right? But I'm going to go Volkanovski. Would I like to see a tighter line? Probably. It makes me wonder where does this line move? Where did it open up at? Um, but I got I got Alexander Volkanovski, man. I, I think I'm going to have to stick with Volk. Like I said, the dude's just been a money train for me. And, you know, I need to see more than one strong Brian Ortega performance, especially after the big layoff and – uh just all things considered, I, I think I'm going to end up on the Volkanovsky.